just over 3,000 pounds. This is a little 1700 Winnebago bunkhouse here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And it's kind of important before we get dove into this one to understand, it's not the least expensive version of this floor plan you're gonna find on the market. Probably not by a long shot. In fact, it might be one of the more expensive. The idea here is that not everyone is looking for um, a, uh, a cheaply built little camper. Some folks are like, look, I want you know, higher quality. I understand I'm willing to pay for higher quality, but I, I can't tow or don't want a big giant camper. I just want something small to take my family around. And that's exactly where this one comes in. Outfitted in that signature Winnebago lighter, brighter interior decor. This is a little camper that doesn't feel so little. Now it's got a seven foot wide body and we'll talk more about that outside. Um, it's also loaded with windows but it is not loaded with carpet. It is extremely easy cleaning. More camping, less cleaning. That's the idea. Now, um, you're going to see a recurring trend of higher grade materials throughout, like the sealed edge counter and tabletops all the way through. There's no T-molded edging on here, so they are far more resistant to any sort of liquid exposure. Now, uh, once again, if they put all the windows in they could. They all open for airflow, and uh, they all have night shades, and they're all tinted. This is not built whatsoever lesser than any of the other Winnebago trailers. It's just built smaller, and that's what's kind of cool about this. Um, now, tiny little box, but we do have a full 13,500 BTU air conditioner up here that really helps pump around a lot of extra airflow in this little guy. Um, and frankly, it's probably overkill. You'll probably be breathing icicles in it. Now, you can see how there's a full overhead cabinet above the bed. But if I take a knee here, you can see it's actually quite deep. It is it is extremely good in or large in size. Now, um, across the bed, either way, you've got cross breeze windows. And that's a standard sort of fire escape window. But what they did over here, if you know, they used the same oversized window right there across from the bed that you'd find in the rest of the micro mini lineup in this thing right here, just to give you some huge visibility right on the campsite side. And on that note, Take uh, note of the fact that we have a real window in the entry door. Now, just like the, the, the main cabin windows, this entry door window here does have a shade. And I know it says thin shade ready, but there actually is the thin shade installed in that as well. And just to the right of the TV, again, for more windows and airflow and viewing, right on the camp side of the camper, we have uh, the largest kitchen breeze through window they could include. Now, things like the TV will actually be standard in here. And right above that, we see a, uh, a Bluetooth uh, DVD stereo type system. So they really, uh, again, they've done anything that they really could as much as they could everywhere that they could, um, including a nice chunk of prep space and real estate right here. And that is something that is hard to find. Now, uh, in, in, you know, in a lot of little campers. Now, speaking of prep space, one of the other things that this one has going for it is that fold-out countertop extension that you see right there. So that kicks open to really give us the most prep space you possibly could have. And then if you also take note, you have a sink cover and a stove cover. And a hyper-detail-oriented thing here. Again, Winnebago going the extra mile. So... The sink cover and the stove cover are giving us the maximum amount of prep space you could have in this little camper. But then they have both rear and side splashes around that stove top. So that when you are cooking, it's not going to, you know, splash around and make a mess. And you don't have to spend all your time scrubbing grease off that little side panel if you're cooking over there. Now, um, next to the microwave, we do have a full depth cabinet. Uh, they gave, like I said, they gave you what they could where they could. That's the uh, owner's pack with all the uh, literature and whatnot. I actually got into this one before our check-in crew had a chance to take that out of there. Beside the microwave and above the furnace. Oh, by the way, I don't want to miss this because I've, I've been guilty of missing this in the past. You have some extra outlets uh, over here under that overhead cabinet space, including some USB plugs for phone charging and whatnot. Now, uh, a dedicated pantry. Or you could use it as a bit of a linen cabinet located near the bathroom area right here, uh, above your propane furnace. And then because there's no oven, which very few little campers like this are going to utilize an oven. I know that some people will. I know that's not 100% of the time. Um, and we do have different campers for that, but there is no like oven option to throw in this one. Instead, what you're going to get here is all the storage they possibly could. And you see how this one's paneled off. I think it's because there's like a water pump. There's something down there that they don't want you to sort of like accidentally crush, you know, if uh, cargo shifts in transit. From there, we'll work our way back to the bathroom, which, like the rest of the camper, not large. 
but effective. It does what it needs to do, and it does it uh, very well. So you've got a foot flush toilet here, but also take note of the fact that you've got a good amount of leg room in front of that. So even, you know, an adult can actually have room for your knees when you're in here. Now, instead of that common travel trailer bunkhouse tub, they went with just a little lip shower so that, you know, when you're taking a shower, the water doesn't splash over the side right here. And you've got a full shower surround panel in addition to both a skylight and the vent fan. Now you might notice how there's no shower curtain on it. They they shipped a shower curtain loose. We just we put that in when we go through and quality inspect the RV, which you don't pay extra for at Halo RV. Things like getting the camper quality inspected several times actually, getting it shipped here, getting it cleaned, uh, all your initial sewer hose, water hose, electric and power surge protectors, um, showing you how it works. Those things are included in our pricing at Halo RV. We don't charge extra. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just put it right out there so you guys can see. It. Now, one thing I do want to point out, just like their big mini plus travel trailers, their highest level trailer, everything's built the same. You have fully framed out doorways so that even with the jacks down, even when this chassis is stressed, the door works the same way, the right way, every single time. Now, our little corner bunks back here, I like to point out this upper bunk has the extra USB plug. So this will kind of be probably the big kid bunk, you know. Bunk is rated for 250 pounds. Now, down below here, we've got our... Uh, uh, you know, exterior folding cargo bunk where this can flip up in transit. We'll see that when we go outside, but obviously sleeping space. And you do have storage below. You can drop that netting to get to it if you are so inclined. And that also helps the RV look and feel not quite so small. Um, you know, for a, a little small dining situation, we do have uh, a, a little dinette. Now, this is more of going to be like the size of like a two adult dinette. Maybe if you're, you know, mom and dad and a, and a little kid, you can all squeeze in together here. And if what you're looking for is a little more space in this area, there's solutions for that. You could consider something like the 193 Apex, which is basically the same floor plan with a dinette slide and a four-person dinette. The 2100 Winnebago, which is the same layout on a tandem axle. Or the new 2306 BHS Winnebago, which is going to give you um, the, uh, the dinette slide and a walk-around Murphy bed front sofa combination. Uh, so there's there's a whole bunch of different new options in this category that two years ago just weren't even there. Um, now, uh, the we've already kind of looked at the window, but important to remember, you do have that cross breeze, and there is an outlet above that as well, hiding behind that light fixture that's easy to miss. And then, then like I said, they don't miss an opportunity for storage in these little guys. And you'll find a recurring trend here where they utilize every ounce of space they really possibly could in this thing. They didn't want to leave an opportunity missed or wasted. They've got the all hardwood cabinet door frames, and I do like the bigger kind of residential sort of cabinet poles. They give you something a little more meatier to grab onto and hold with your hands. You can reach back here, and you can feel where this is pocket screwed together. It's not, um, you know, particle board and, and, and beaver puke that's been stapled together. <laughs> beaver puke is a favorite phrase of mine. Um, up here, this is your King Jack antenna system. Now, without power on it, it's kind of difficult to see, but if you look really closely here on this label, you might notice a couple little darker dots. Those are signal indicators, and that's what's kind of cool about this one, is that you can turn the antenna from the inside, and you can get an idea of what kind of signal and clarity you're going to get. So you only have to scan channels once or twice, and now like three or four times. You don't have to turn and scan and turn and scan and turn and scan. Now below that uh, big dining window here, for maximum sleeping, if you do need to try to sleep five in here, you can fold that dinette down, uh, you know, to, to once again, just like the storage, squeeze every ounce of juice out of this, uh, you know, this little sweet fruit here. Now you're not looking at the greatest amount of storage under this dinette, but they did what they could. But what I really respect here is how nicely they finished it off. First of all, you notice that when we peel these cushions up, you see uh, tongue and groove like plywood sheeting that you're sitting on. Better grade materials used throughout. That's kind of the recurring trend here. Um, so you've got this handy little like storage bucket chest thing right here. And the reason it's paneled off is because there's something like a furnace, a water heater, a whatever behind that panel. Kind of similar over here. They gave you what they could. Uh, they gave you as much as they could. It's not complete full storage. But that's actually one of the reasons why you're able to have the flip-up cargo bunk back here. If they, uh, you know, a lot of manufacturers won't have that cargo door and they won't have the flip-up bunk in the back. Uh, but that means that they could take whatever is under these benches and shove it under the, the rear um, bunk area back there. Which obviously is just not going to be the case here in the Winnebago. One of the first things I want to talk about outside 
is the fiberglass because there's a couple exceptional qualities going on with it here. So we're looking at a white 1700 uh, BH, but there could be any number of different colors on the one that we actually have in stock. This may or may not match the one that's here on the grounds at Halid RV. There could be platinum or champagne or red or blue or other colors. There's different exterior colors, just like there's a couple different interior decors. We were looking at the lighter stone color. There's also a darker graphite. In a smaller camper, we did want to go with the lighter colors, at least initially, to give it that larger look and feel. But we are always open to feedback. Um, you know, uh, if, if there's a different color you'd like to see on this, definitely let us know so that we can make sure that we're bringing in the right one for you, you know? Um, now, another thing on this fiberglass is that it is uh, a, a, a best in class feature, and really it's pretty much an industry best feature. If we get right up close to it, let me get around this larger folding handle, you can see that it has a, a near mirror like finishing quality about it. It's because it is a higher grade fiberglass. Um, basically, it's the same base skin that you'll find used on diesel pushers. Kind of not a coincidence, that's, you know, where Winne most people know Winnebago, but these travel trailers are actually exploding in popularity. Um, it's, it's been, it, they, these have been the largest sector of growth in, in Winnebago RVs in years. Um, and, you know, last year, we were the largest uh, Winnebago towable dealer in the Midwest. So, I, I can tell you from experience that folks, uh, you know, find these popular. And the, I think one of the things a lot of people like about them is we don't seem to get them back in the shop. They seem to stay in your driveway more than pretty much any other brand of camper we have here at Halid RV. And that is saying something, because we are wide in variety and options. So, again, the message here is tiny camper, but still full featured. They gave you the largest power awning they could. If it went any longer, it'd cover that huge window on the inside that I think you're gonna like the, the light, the window, uh, the, uh, the viewing and the airflow from that. Um, there is LED lighting below it. It does have tiltable, you know, tilt and lock awning arms. The entry door is easy, uh, or uh, anti-slam rather. If I get up here and grab a hold of it, the door doesn't want to fling shut. But it does have the little screenshot auto close screen band. And by the way, if you're ever curious when you're on the inside of this, you can flip that down and you can actually, well, of course I actually have to get my finger under it, but you can lock that screen door, um, closed or uh yeah closed by the way in case you got a little kid inside you don't want bopping around now the bigger entry handle the double steps those are extra like winnebago detail things you won't always find in the small camper category like this um just past the awning usually up front you'll find a little gas grill quick connect on these winnebagos so that if you do want to bring your own little grill with you bang you're good to go speaking of propane that big box right there is your propane uh tanks the tray and the regulator. Winnebago ships those loose, and I like that because it allows us to hook up a weight distribution and anti-sway hitch exactly where you and your trailer need, not where we can fit it. There is a difference there. And I also want to use that to point out the fact that you can, th this is a massive underbed storage. It goes the entirety of the space under the bed, which again, that's one of the reasons why you have a little less storage under the dinette area, but frankly, this is easier to get to because you don't have to take off the top of the dinette to get to it. You can just pop open a door. Both sides of the pass-through have the same larger baggage door with the uh, easy one-hand latches, and this is, people are going to call this a slam latch, and I slip and sometimes do too. It's technically a compression latch. You see how it bounced? You're supposed to lift the handle and then let go, and bang. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, once again... Winnebago details. They seal the piano hinge on this baggage door so that you're not worried about water getting on that hinge and springing it. Um, I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, but I want to reiterate because it seems appropriate at this time, all aluminum skeleton. So your floors, your walls, your roof, your nose, uh, they are all aluminum framed and you are riding on a different chassis here. This is a lighter weight and stronger, but not less expensive, Z-frame, not an I-beam. Um, it's, a, it's a different kind of concept. It's a huck-bolted chassis, uh, and my experience has been virtually any camper riding on that chassis seems to have the lowest instance of warranty rates related to structural stress. And I think it's this simple. If you want a good house, you start with a good foundation. Well, there's nothing wrong with an I-beam camper frame. There is nothing wrong with that. And, and some very good campers, uh, like you know Rockwoods, for instance, will we'll run on an I-beam chassis or Freedom Express. Those are great. Well, Winnebago wanted to go better. And that's what seems to have been accomplished here. 
Now, uh, power awning, power tongue jack, those things make uh, life a little bit easy, but what you can't see is that Winnebago spent a little more money on higher grade motors on those things so that the awning and the tongue jack move a little faster. Now, this little camper is easy to park in the shade, and then what you can do if you want to, um, you can uh, take that little portable side mount prep area there, and you can get one of those portable solar panels, keep the camper parked in the shade, and put the panel in the sun. That's something that roof panels can't do. Roof panels have their own advantages, of course. You know, it, there's, there's different benefits to different things. I also want to point out the fact that we do have four corner stabilizer jacks, and Winnebago takes the time to put the little sand pads on there so they don't sink on you. Um, some dollar cheaper cutthroat little campers won't have these front jacks right here those are little details you got to watch out for a full outside utility shower makes it easy to kind of hose the kids off if they've been in the lake or something like that or maybe just rinse the sand off if you've been in the beach before you go inside the camper aluminum wheel radial tire and a galvanized steel wheel well right here that is there god forbid something happens to this tire the belted radial that we're riding on, it'll, this will help give you that extra time to get this thing brought down from speed to uh, to get parked. Now, pardon me, the used camper right behind this thing, apparently the battery's about dead over the weekend and the uh, CO detector is currently squealing at us because it's making sure that, you know, if your family were in it, you're not going to get killed, which is a good thing, obviously, but if you hear a little squealing, it's not versitis, you're not going crazy. There's just a little whine in the background as that battery dies down. Um, and I've actually disconnected the battery. The CO detectors have their own little uh, warning system. So this right here, you can lock it, you can deadbolt it. So it, this has the same level of security your main entry door does. So a lot of people say, man, I'm worried about somebody opening the door and taking my kids. I understand the concern, but in practical application, you're good. That's just not a concern because this can lock just like your main entry door can lock. But what's cool, the reason that this is here is you can push this up against the wall. There's a little bullet latch right there that you can latch shut and you can turn this whole darn thing into this large cargo garage back here. And that is so handy for those extra chairs because you have that big storage area under the bed plus all this. This is a little camper with a lot of cargo space. But I really like looking back here for this piece of plywood, this cross member, this gusseting right here, because even where they're not expecting you to look, Winnebago's still using better materials for structure. And that's, again, just kind of who these guys are. We have the uh, the tiny spare tire right here. Well, like, not tiny, but it, it, the tiny the spare tire on the tiny camper, as it were. It's the same. It's a full spare tire, the size of the rest of them. It's early. I don't know why I said tiny. And we've got a full walk-on roof. And just a d quick demonstration of that little factor. One of the reasons I'm up here is because when you are in this narrow body, single axle camper segment, not every camper has a walk-on roof. It is, I think, less of an issue on a small camper like this because you can do more service and cleaning from the side of the camper. But if you remember how I opened this video, this is not the dollar cheapest camper you're going to find in this class and category. It's probably, if not the most, one of the most expensive in this floor plan, in this layout. But it's also one of the best constructed. So if what you're looking for is small but high quality, and long-lasting, congratulations, you found it. And you can find us every day, Coldwater, Michigan, very southern part of Michigan, right before you tip into Indiana, right on the highway, easy to get to, easy to hook up, easy to head out, because easy recreation is supposed to be part of the equation. So with that, I invite you to give us a call because we do hitching, pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, RV deliveries, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.